Hi, Kathy. My name is Nontlan from Dr. Dia Irendel School. I need your assistance with a question on accommodation. Woman, I. Now, first rule, do our labels. So, what is A? A is going to be our ciliary muscle. Okay? And B, the suspensory ligaments. Alright. C, this is the coloured part of the eye and it is the iris. And it's the iris that controls the amount of light that enters the eye. And then D is the cornea, which is transparent. It's the portion of your eye where if you were wearing a contact lens, you put the contact lens on that portion, all right? And it's also covered by the conjunctiva. And then E is your lens. And the lens is always elastic. And diagram one and two have the same labels, all right? Now, if we look at diagram one, this lens is long and flat or very little convex here, and it is long. So this is for long vision. And I say long vision, tongue in cheek, because it is distant vision. Okay, it's to see far away. It's long and thin to see long, long distances. And this one is short and round, okay, to see close up. So this is for near vision. Okay, so near vision is closer than six meters. And long distance is further than six meters, okay. So it's further than six meters, closer than six meters. Now let's look at our quizzes. Right, it says, give the letter name of the part that contracts to change the shape of the lens. Let's just see what number it is. It is A, it is the ciliary muscle. Okay, then controls the amount of light that enters the eye, ha, that is the iris. So not just a pretty face here, it's the iris. That's the color in our eyes and it is C. That controls the light, so our retina doesn't get damaged. So um, it is C, iris. And is protected by the conjunctiva, well, I have to look because I've got to find what letter it is. It is the cornea, so it is D, so D, cornea. That was easy enough. Now, study diagram one and two. What process is responsible for the change in the shape of part E? So part E is the lens, and what process is responsible for that? It is, come on, people, a... Uh, R M M O D A T I O N. Okay, two C's and two M's. Accommodation. You are accommodating for long vision. So long ways away and nearby. All right, that's accommodation. And what plays a role here? It is the lens. And then which diagram, one or two, represents the state of the eye when a person's reading a book? That's going to be near vision, okay? And near vision is diagram two. How do we know? Because the lens is nice and round. Now I want to just show you something. For accommodation, okay, let's just quickly put here, it would be diagram two. Okay, so when we look at a car modation, okay, let's say the eye is set for distant vision, so you are relaxed, the eye is relaxed. Okay, we're now going to have number one, the ciliary muscle, muscle contracts. and pulls towards the lens. 
Okay, so it pulls towards the lens. The suspensory ligaments slacken. Okay, so look here. Here, the ciliary muscle contracts and it pulls towards the lens. These ciliary muscles here are going to now become slack so that the lens can go rounder. Right, so go back here. The suspensory ligaments slacken. Three, there is less tension on the lens. Lens becomes rounder and more convex. Okay. Therefore, what's going to happen? We're going to have light is more refracted and six image is focused onto the retina. Okay, now, if you know that, so you're only looking here at the eyes relaxed and it then moves to looking nearby. All right, so we now want to focus on something closer than six meters. So let me just go back here. So closer, oh man, what am I doing? Closer than six meters. Okay, near vision. So we go from relaxed to looking close by. So I'm going to do this. The ciliary muscles contract. So the opposite, the ciliary muscles relax. And they pull away from the lens. The suspensory ligaments become taut. Means they become tight. There is more tension on the lens. The lens becomes longer and less convex. The light is therefore less refracted and the image is focused on the eye. So everything here in, in green is for if it is long distance and more than six meters. You understand people? So you only have to learn one because the other one is exactly the opposite. It's easy to learn. All right. It's like marks for jam. Okay. We have another video that we're going to do in this section. So let's look at our new video. Hey guys, this is Sulafella Sidhu. Can you please help me with this question? Okay. Thank you, Han. Here we go. The question, all right, what do we see? We have a pedigree diagram. Now, a pedigree diagram, when you get a pedigree diagram, you must say, oh wow, I'm excited. This is free marks, free, 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 yay. And it shows the inheritance of a certain it's a genetic disorder, okay? And it's controlled by a recessive allele, which means that you must have two to see the disorder. In other words, for it to present in the phenotype. The dominant allele is represented by a capital N and the recessive allele by a little n. So now if we look here, here is our pedigree diagram. We got mom and we got dad and they have a daughter and three boys. But they say here if it is shaded then it is an affected, uh, an affected boy or girl and if it's clear then they are normal. Now we got normal mom and dad but mom and dad each have this child and this child and we know that we need two recessive alleles for the genetic disorder to be or for these people to be affected by the genetic disorder. Now, in order for them both to have two little ends, or the recessive alleles, it means mom must have a recessive allele and dad must have a recessive allele. But dad and mom look normal, which means they must have the dominant gene too. Now, what are these kids here? Well, I can have capital N and capital N, or capital N and small n. So, dominant and dominant, dominant and recessive. And the same here, D 
dominant and dominant, dominant and recessive. So here, homozygous dominant, heterozygous, homozygous recessive, homozygous dominant, homozygous heterozygous. Okay, I mean heterozygous. So, let's look at our questions. Explain why both parents must be heterozygous for this characteristic. Well, this is easy. Um, first of all, both parents must, must carry the recessive allele. Okay, why? Because they produce children that are affected. Okay, but, and this is where it comes in, but both parents are phenotypically normal. So each must have a dominant allele. So because they produce children that are affected, there are two little ends. One from mom and one from dad, which means mom and dad must carry it. But mom and dad look normal. Okay? They look normal. So phenotypically they look normal. So therefore they can only be heterozygous. Give a possible genotypes of the two normal children while well, we work that out. Those two normal children can either be N, N or N, N. This would be heterozygous. Zyg oh, for heaven's sake. Gus. <laughs> it's like my brain's gone still. And this is homozygous dominant. I mean, heterozygous means different. Homo means the same. But homozygous dominant, you've got two dominant alleles. And then it says provide evidence from the pedigree diagram to show that this characteristic is not sex linked. Okay, now people, if it is sex linked, okay, let's put if. If sex linked, the father, okay, would be affected. And I'm going to show you why now. In order for a daughter, um, to be affected. Okay, so what we're saying is the dad would have to be affected in order to provide a daughter that's like this because when it is sex linked, it sits on the X chromosome. So, look at this. Let's do our little Punnett square. Okay, we've got our gametes, and we have meiosis. I love genetics, it's my best. Fertilization, okay? And now, the mother is going to be XX, and we know that the mother carries the recessive gene, and she carries the dominant gene because she looks normal. And the dad is going to be XY. But there's no N on this Y. The little N has to be here in order to produce a daughter that is affected. Okay, here the daughter is going to be normal. Here the son, whoopsie, the son, ah, man, you see, so I'm trying to do it quickly. Okay, let's just get my pen back. Okay, here the son is going to be normal and here the little son is going to be he's going to be affected so these two will be affected only if the father is affected and if you look back here dad is 
normal. He's not shaded. All right. So it cannot be sex-linked. It's as simple as that.